So did we want to do the project sort of then? It's recording now. Project Sponge, we, what did we do? We uh, made a, an isometric grid display using the, just the swing toolkit and some, uh, some just graphics. We used the, the, the canvas uh, class and drew lines on it and stuff. Uh, we made some animations display and we managed to make it so that you can uh, select different squares on the grid and then you'd be highlighted <laughs> as you move across. So you can get information about grid squares pretty easily. Are you switching over to swim now? For now. For now. Yeah, and until we can make a slick behave itself. So well I mean like yeah, that's we kinda divided it up into that last time. We're just trying to make a model such that it doesn't matter whether we do it in swim or slick so far. Nice. So how else do we have I was at my friend's house and I threw a big party and I was like, what do I do? There was a lot of nothing in there. I ended up playing. Now I have a mom. Is that true? Well, hopefully you can help your I think Alex was just freaking out. He's like, I want no coupling at all. None of my classes want to talk to each other ever. Well, you know, he was like, we had no coupling. Yeah, it's like just a bunch of rapper classes around each other. <laughs> and so like anytime you wanted to like do something top level, they just had to reach his arm down through the entire thing to pull something out. They didn't figure out how to make something do it. Yes, it is. I would say it is. <laughs> I would. projects being worked on? Nate? Okay. So I guess I'll hit Civilization 5 real quick. Uh, Civ 5 is an awesome game. Everyone should play it. Uh, <laughs> just go to Steam, download it right now, like seven times. Uh, the Game of the Year edition is out now, uh -huh. so you can get all the DLC with it. So. Sweet. It's uh, part of a really popular uh, franchise. Uh, Civ has been around since the beginning of time, pretty much. Uh, right. <laughs> and for everyone who's not familiar with the, the Civ franchise, it's a turn-based strategy game uh, where you take control of a civilization and you basically uh, try to win using one of the win conditions they have, which would be like dominate the world or have your culture take over the world or, uh, <laughs> or uh, what is it, technology. So you get the, the most of technology and you like colonize another star system or something. Uh, and there's a bunch more of them. So what's the name of the designer? Well, like yeah. yeah. Okay, and one of the... Uh, big parts of civilization is the civilopedia, which is just like an encyclopedia of all the things that are involved in the game. So here, uh, yeah, we, we maybe we should turn off those lights.
Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, basically, uh, what you see here is uh, it's got information on some more of the Civilopedia. This would be like their entry on oil. And as you can see, this is mainly just uh, some of the gameplay statistics over here. Yes. You know, what it gives you. This would be, it gives you one production on its tiles. And some historical info over there. So why do you think they put so much effort into this in Civilopedia? <laughs> Because that makes the game feel a lot more complete, I think. It's fun to like read through the, the historical info, try to maybe come up with your own strategies, strategies on how to use the whatever, the resource, the unit, whatever you're talking about. There's also uh, info on different civilizations and how they worked throughout history, important things they did. There's uh, info on like important leaders and historical figures. So, yep. Nope. nope. Uh, they, uh, the information in here is like real history, I think. Uh, the, the game takes a lot of uh, uh, like historical fact and puts it in. Uh, so. hmm? It makes the world more immersive, really. Sources in a reality that doesn't exist. Yeah. It would be like so abstract. If you play a game, you wouldn't know what's going on. Right. Part of it would. <laughs> It's always nice to empower your players, so this gives them knowledge, knowledge is power, therefore. <laughs> Alright, here's just an example of what the in-game interface would sort of look like. Uh, as you can see, there's a, a hex grid. Cities. All right, this is a gigantic city. This is New York in town. Uh, apparently, they're building some tanks. Uh, but cities are one of the most important aspects of the game. Basically, everything you do is done in a city. You either are building a unit or you're building buildings in the city. Uh, your cities have different attributes. They like their, how much money they make, which goes over to your total uh, income as a civilization. They have things like a how much science output they have, so how fast you can upgrade your technology. Uh, there's things like food, production, so production is how fast you make stuff. So say combat units or buildings or world wonders. Uh, I think this is actually a picture of New York and they're launching a satellite right now. It's hard to tell from this picture, but it's right here. It's Either a space victory or it's a nuke. Yeah. One of the two. <laughs> there you go. All right. Here, diplomacy is a pretty important part of the game. So this is sort of what happens when you uh, either talk to an NPC or another player if you're playing multiplayer. Uh, so this would be Captain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, one of the ways of winning the game is through diplomacy. I think that's the next slide here, right? 
if you build the United Nations, or someone does, and you get everyone on the map to vote for you, then you basically win the game. Uh, in multiplayer games, this isn't seen very much because obviously other players don't want you to win because they want to win. Uh, but for single player games, this can happen pretty often. Usually, for city states. Right. Multiplayer games. Yeah. In single player, like one of the ways that you win di diplomatic victory is you get a bunch of allies, they all vote for you, and then you go and kill the bad guys, and then there's no one voting against you. Ta da! Culture is an important part of the game. Uh, basically, your cities, in addition to their gold and science output, they also output a certain amount of culture, which I don't know what is a unit of culture, but eh, it's an abstraction for the game. Uh, and what it does, it allows you to buy certain upgrades for your society. So basically, here, these, each of these things would give you something special. And if you get a certain number of these things, you, uh, in this case, uh, you win the game through culture. So basically, you establish a utopia, and everyone is happy. Technology, also an extremely important part of the game. Uh, basically, you need technology to win any of the other types of victories. Uh, like here, you usually start out with some basic technologies, and as you unlock some, there's a tech tree, and this would continue on, like, three rooms that way. But you uh, research technologies, and they give you new abilities, like some, you can research archery, it lets you build archers. You can build miners, it lets you build mines. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's like breeding animals. So. It increases your vocabulary. Yeah, that's an important aspect of Civ. Yes. I think that's the Civ of like it just really inhibits, like, I mean, not inhibits, like, encourages tangential learning or whatever. Because it, it puts it right there. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
some stats, basically movements, is how far you can move in a turn. So uh, cavalry can all obviously move faster than infantry and cannons. Uh, strength, uh, it's pretty straightforward, it's how much damage you do in direct combat. how much damage he does at range. Yeah. Um, each unit, I think, has a, uh, an attack strength and a defense strength. So let's say, uh, let's say like tanks, they're really strong. Well, that's a bad example. Let's say helicopters. They do a lot of, uh, a lot of damage when they're attacking someone, but they're pretty easy to kill if you attack a helicopter, so. More combat. This guy is uh, what I was talking about. Some artillery shooting at something, which just got obliterated. Uh, helicopters, infantry over there. Next to a big city. More artillery. Um, oh, an important thing is that uh, where your unit is will affect its combat stats. So, like, let's say you're in a forest, you're harder to shoot at than say someone who's out in an open plain. So usually it's best to like hide in forests or something and not attack someone who is hidden in the forest, or and try not to like say cross this river. Say say there's a bad guy over here, and this guy tried to cross the river and attack him. He this guy would suffer all sorts of combat disadvantages for trying to cross the river. Uh, and basically nukes. Not much to say about that except you can nuke people. Not always the best plan because then everyone hates you, but you can do it if you really want to. If they have nukes, yeah. Like if you nuke someone, they're probably going to nuke you back or at least try to. Unless you destroy their nukes. That too. Yep. Nope, it's turn-based, so your nukes will hit them, and then their nukes will fire off them on their turn. <laughs> so, right. I thought I already struck. Okay. Right. This is just an example of some of the gameplay. Uh, this guy is fighting some barbarians right now. Barbarians are in no one's civilization. They're just uh, like NPCs that run around and try to kill everyone. Now he's fighting a certain uh, city-state. I believe he actually fails to take this city, so. <laughs> See what happens when he attacks the city, the city gets to counterattack his units. show all of this video, but uh, he's got some swords, man. He's going to invade another little city-state. about the borders, like these borders you can see here, you can see my mouse, like this represents the, uh, the territory that's controlled by this city here, so that's that city, awesome. and over here you can see some uh, up in this, what is this, the top right corner, you can see some borders there, that is for a different civilization, so I believe it's this guy's civilization, so this purple and yellow. Uh, that's the territory that's controlled by his civilization. So you can see down here on the map, uh, this yellowish color here would be the the player's territory, I believe, and the purple dots in it represent where his cities are. All right. And then these two would be like this, but it's a 
control a grid or you don't. So, and you can move your units into a grid you can't control. Obviously, this guy's units are in enemy territory. So, really, this is uh, just for uh, like uh, resource production. Like, if you have access to a resource or how much uh, production your cities have. And it gives some certain uh, combat bonuses and things like that. Does it mean, or does the border go underneath that model on the left? Over here? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it does. It doesn't really matter, but you control this hex so they can't walk into this. But. It's not that the border is going, like, the thing that's over the border is part of the construction that's on it, which is a mine. Okay. So, like, it, it raises the Right, let's see if I can find him doing something stupid. Uh, oh, here's just blindly uh, dropped his unit into enemy territory. He had no idea what was there, but now he's doing it. gonna do it some more, do some more stupid stuff. Here, I'm gonna get all of my men flanked. I'm gonna put all of my units right next to two of his cities, get everyone flanked like hell. This was just a terrible idea. Never do this. Actually, no. It's better now, but still, it's it's still pretty bad. Like, you'll see pretty soon here. A lot of his guys are just going to die because he thought, well, I'm going to pull a D-Day. Well, guess what? Lots of people died on D-Day. Because as soon as you uh, move your guys off of the boats, they can't do anything. So uh, they have to sit there for a round while the bad guys shoot at them like that. That is why this was a very bad idea. See, like half this guy's men are already dead. Well, if I'm gonna attack the city. So one thing this guy has going for him is apparently he has musket men and gunpowder, but the bad guys don't. Uh, Nope, those look like enemy muskets, so never mind. Okay, so uh, no, I think this is yeah. And usually there's other sound effects going on. I think just for this YouTube video is cutting a lot of them out. So like you'd hear like gunshots going off and stuff when they're firing. Uh, Hey, look, tanks. Hey, look, uh, there's like the Pentagon down there. There's some infantry. Uh, don't know why he's still using cavalry, but hey, whatever. What are you about to do? Don't know. Oh, he's attacking with bombers. Boom. Oh, a nuke. <laughs> Did not know that was coming, but it's very entertaining. Boom. And now there you can see the fallout everywhere. Oh, he's nuking some more people. Yeah. No, he didn't have to do that. <laughs> Pretty much. You just sitting with one person That's useless. Yeah, and now there's uh, radiation everywhere. Oh, he's nuking some more people. Oh. <laughs> so that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. Boom. Yeah, he just nuked some uh, like medieval aged people. <laughs> it's like that was definitely necessary. Oh, and he nuked himself a little bit right there. So, <laughs> yeah, be careful with that nukes. I think those are just bombers or fighters. Yeah. Green. <laughs> <laughs> 
So that's uh, about it. What's the final state of the technology? Uh, <laughs> we put Empire. So basically, this would be the final stage of technology. It would be modern stuff. Uh, yeah, you get better nukes. There's a killer death robot or giant death robot. <laughs> So it's a little past modern technology, but giant death robot. <laughs> Alright. Oh, that's a submarine firing a nuke at somebody. Boom. Burn. Yeah, this guy obviously is not. Like yeah. Sure. <laughs> so I'm because they are named after real cities. <laughs> uh, these are all cities. So. Uh, huh? Like, it says Munich right there. Right. That's actually Egypt. It's just Germany's city that they stole from them. Right. Yep. So these were all originally like cities of a different civilization. So like Munich, this guy was invading Germany, so he controlled Munich. Uh, yeah, but as you uh, build cities as a certain civilization, they'll give they'll receive names of uh, a city from that civilization, or you can rename it to whatever you want. But by default, they just give them a name of like I think in decreasing order of size. Yeah, you can. I've done that before. <laughs> Tylerville, Tyler City, Tyler Creek. I had Tyler or Tyler Harbor and stuff like that. It's people who lived in my civiliza civilization were Tylerites. Uh, <laughs> All right, so that's. Did anyone use, did anyone get any coupons from Steam during the holiday thing and then not use them? Like me? Like, I haven't used any of those coupons. I'm probably not going to. I have one for 25% off any Valve game. 30 points. Yeah, 30, I got 33% off.
also have one for LA and Iran. I believe that's 15% off. Yeah. Sure. Oh, 50% off. Wow, oh, that's cool. <laughs> Although I probably won't buy it. The game was pretty sweet. Just because I don't feel like spending money right now. Yeah. If I buy it, it would be $20. Which is not bad. These are all cities. So. Okay. Looking into, um, like, I don't know, what, educational games or documentary games. Um, like, I know Extra Credits mentioned this many episodes ago. Um, the Cat and the Coop. It's a it's a, hip, a historical game. I wonder if I can play it. Yeah, it is. But I have it downloaded. I don't know why I chose to I call it because I like to use my desktop. Right Yeah, it's, 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 it's an interactive timeline, that's what it is. And it's a family timeline. Yeah, I didn't get one. I, didn't, I, I, I liked, though, that it was definitely college. Like, I, the other, all of the other games I played, looking into educational games and documentary games, they were terrible. I don't really think I learned anything from the chat and the food. Yeah, me neither. I'm like, I wanted to learn because I, I like history. Is it familiar? Mm -hmm. I used to, I like yeah. massive things. 
Something to run in my computer. How many gigs of RAM does your computer have? Um, a lot. This game better. <laughs> more than more than two. I don't remember. I'm bad at numbers. Okay. The piano. Okay, so I think it's what it is. Is that whenever I don't do anything. If you haven't noticed yet, it's going in reverse chronological order. It's like a tummy thing. Just did Break. What the heck is running on my computer today? Don't alt tab or freeze I didn't know how to alt tab. It's called Explorer. Yeah, OneNote and Word. Yeah, but OneNote is always open. I'll plug it in. I'll plug it in. Okay. 
absolutely horrible that it forces me to like quit the game out of anger. But it was so on. I, I, I'll probably show it to you. Yeah. What logo is that again? Uh, that's the United Nations. United Nations logo? Yeah. Of the big one. It works better if you're on a digital model. That's who the, the bulldog is on a picture. I think it's supposed to be... Um, what's his name? I think this is the end.
job of teaching you. I still like this game a lot. It's because it's well done. Show you that yeah. whole video. Or maybe I'll post it on Facebook. I've already seen that one. So there was a game called um, Finding the. It was supposed to be an educational game about domestic violence. It was so horrible and unplayable, and it made no sense. I think it's just inherent because computer science, um, there's way more stuff to know, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like, I guess people are it's a lot more concrete knowledge. And also people have more like practice with it. Like Were they teaching like, the problem with games is that everyone almost everyone does not know anything about them. Yeah. And so they don't feel calm. looks like something you could seriously get repetitive stress injury over. What? Repetitive stress injury. Because it's all keyboard based mm -hmm. and you can do things really fast just by pressing keys. But I, I imagine you could get like car carpal tunnels. What's it called? Syndrome? Yeah. Carpal tunnel. Just carpal tunnel. <laughs> you could get that. But the thing is, you should be the 
Well, theoretically, you would be the person responsible for it. And you would rather trade that for programming. I kind of get freaked out whenever I see someone programming super fast. Like, that does not look healthy. That looks scary. Yeah. I, I feel like he probably trained himself. Have you seen, like, he's... Trophies. Yeah. I wanted to go, but I have no time. Talk was really more about like how to get the why why is the yeah he said it himself that half the talk is why is it is awesome but it also it also looks like something you could seriously get repetitive stress injury over what repetitive stress injury over because it's all keyboard based mm -hmm. and you can do things really fast just by pressing keys but I, I imagine you could get like car carpal tunnel Syndrome? Yeah. That's carpal tunnel. <laughs> you could get that. So the thing is, you should be the, well, theoretically, yeah. you would be the person responsible for it. Yeah. And you would rather trade that for programming. I kind of get freaked out whenever I see someone programming super fast. Like, that does not look healthy. That looks scary. Yeah. I, I feel like he probably trained himself. Have you seen, like, 